the granddaddy of American monsters is Sasquatch. And of course, there are reports of that large hairy bipeds in Ohio. Arguably one of the most famous of these is the Ohio Grassman, whose sightings date back as early as the 1700s. Recently in the news, two drone operators whose YouTube page We Do It In The Outdoors made the news in what most are calling a hoax. According to the video's description, my friend and I got permission to fly our drones at Salt Fork State Park in Ohio. While we were there, we heard many strange noises and we may or may not have found the Ohio Grassman. We used a GoPro Hero 7 Black, GoPro Hero 7 8 Black, and the DJI Maverick Air and DJI Maverick Mini. Please let us know what you think about the Ohio Grassman or Bigfoot in the Salt Fork State Park. Critics of the video point out that the Bigfoot is never shown in detail. The men never approach it or ever film it in focus, although trees and other objects in the landscape appear crystal clear. The size, appearance, mannerisms, and gait of the purported cryptid could easily have been produced by a person wearing bulky winter clothing, something commonplace in Ohio at the time this video was taken. Even the guttural cry could have come from a person or been overlaid from another sound clip. Despite their doubts about the veracity of this video, skeptics are torn between whether or not if the Bigfoot in question is a man in a bulky jacket and dark clothing. This represents a misidentification or deliberate hoax. But over the centuries, the Ohio Grassman was not seen as a hoax, at least to the native tribes and early settlers. During the late 1700s, the native Indians, the Delaware of Ohio, as mentioned in the history of Newcomerstown, described to the new settlers their frequent encounters with the hairy hominids and that they had to leave out food for the wild ones of the woods to keep the peace. The more modern record of Bigfoot in Ohio begins, so far as the accounts go, in 1869 with a news account uncovered by cryptozoologist Mark A. Hall. It concerns the reports from Galapagos, Ohio on the Ohio River. The account appeared on January 23, 1869 in an article headlined, A Gorilla in Ohio. It told of a hairy creature haunting the woods near the town that had jumped on a man riding in a carriage. The man's daughter, who was also in the carriage, threw a stone at the animal as it struggled with her father. The rock hit the animal's ear and the gorilla departed. In recent years, one of the most active areas in the East for Bigfoot reports has been Ohio where the creature even have been given such local names as Orange Eyes and Grassman. Maybe it is because Ohio has so many people to oversee the creatures, or there are more of the hairy hominids there. In the mid-1970s, there was an explosion of activity that occurred in Ohio. The state's place in Bigfoot studies became very prominent, due in a large part to the early work there of Thomas Archer, Jim Rastetter, Earl Jones, Charles Wilhelm, and especially Ron Schaffner, who remains active there today. Maybe then it has something to do with the large number of researchers who have been involved in field investigations in Ohio. Outside of California, there isn't any other state that has as many quote-unquote Bigfooters who see themselves as active hunters and researchers of the hairy upright beings. One of the best cases of the Ohio Grassman comes in the 1970s and was chronicled in some detail by homegrown researcher Ron Schaffner. Just as the famous Momo the Missouri Monster is to the Show Me State, Schaffner calls the Minerva case by far the most complex and interesting one in his Ohio files. Rumors of activity east of Minerva actually began surfacing in early July and early August 1978. It was around this date that Evelyn and Howe Caton's grandchildren and their friends came running into their Minerva home crying in a frightened state. They claim to have seen a large hairy monster in a nearby gravel pit. Vickett Keck and the Catons were outside to see what had scared them. They saw a creature that was covered in dark matted hair. They estimated it to be about 300 pounds and 7 feet tall. It just stood there, said Evelyn Caton. It didn't move, but I almost broke my neck running back down the hill. She later observed the creature in the daylight. It was sitting in the pit picking at the garbage. She could not make out any facial features due to the amount of long hair covering its face. She remembered that the creature had no visible neck. The Minerva sightings then began in earnest on August 21, 1978 at 10.30 p.m. 
In Schaffner's case notes, he points out that Evelyn Caton's family and friends saw two pairs of yellow eyes from what seemed to, at first, be from two panthers. But then the party saw a large upright hairy creature step in front of the large cats as if to protect them. After the Bigfoot peered in a kitchen window, the eyewitnesses reached for their guns, and the creature suddenly left. A strong stench was still lingering in the area even after a deputy sheriff agreed to investigate. Deputy Shannon proceeded to interview the witnesses. They searched the entire area on horseback and in jeeps and only found unusual but unclear footprints. The next night, the hairy biped came back and was visible on top of a hill near a strip mine. Still again on August 23rd, the thing returned for a visit, but when How Caton fired a gunshot into the air, it departed. After three nights of visits, Mrs. Ackerman observed two ape-like animals across from the strip mine in broad daylight on September 8th. Schaffner and another investigator later learned that before all the Bigfoot activity, one of the Catons' German shepherds was found dead with a broken neck. Ron Schaffner and Associate Earl Jones interviewed the Catons on two separate occasions. During their second visit, they backpacked and spent the night in the upper woods looking for physical evidence. They came up with no evidence, nor did they witness anything unusual. For Schaffner, one of the more bizarre elements of the incident has always been the sighting of the Phantom Panthers along with the Harry Hominid. Down through the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, with an explosion of interest for Bigfoot studies in Ohio, reports of the Grassman and other Bigfoot creatures would pop up now and then, but none were ever as famous as the Minerva Monster, which remains the most intriguing Bigfoot event in Ohio history. A flap of Bigfoot-like creature sightings in Logan and Union Counties, Ohio, took place a couple years after the Minerva events. The strangest of which was the encounter reported by Union County Legal Secretary Mrs. Donna Riegler, who was driving home from work on June 24, 1980. On a stormy evening after a hot muggy day with lightning flashing, Riegler slowed to drive over some railroad tracks. Then she saw it lying on the road all hunched over. She thought it was a dog at first, but then it stood up, and she second-guessed herself into imagining that it was a man. But then it turned and looked at her. She saw it was then a creature, an upright creature, with bent hands held out, palms up. She could not see any facial features, but from what she described, it was definitely a Bigfoot. Riegler drove away, literally escaped as fast as she could, then stopped at the first house she saw, a stranger's and was so unnerved that she broke down and sobbed. The Minerva monster sightings are so well known within the Sasquatch community that this cryptid alone warrants its own foray into the unknown files at a future date. In 1942, the Ohio Historical Society officially listed Cedar Bog as a natural preserve, the first of its kind in the state. Today, approximately one quarter of all the plant species in Ohio call cedar bog home, along with over a hundred species of birds and many rare reptiles and fish. And if the stories are to be believed, the bog also has one other infamous resident, a Sasquatch. Shortly after cedar bog, which is actually a fen, opened, locals began whispering about spotting a huge ape-like creature walking along Woodburn Road, which runs alongside the bog. Some claimed it was Bigfoot himself, while others said it was an albino relative. One thing they all agreed on, though, was that the creature was too big to be a man. It was unlike anything they'd ever seen before. Sometime thereafter, a long metal fence topped with barbed wire was erected along both sides of Woodburn Road. Most people just assumed it was designed to protect the bog by keeping people out. But there are some who believe, even today, that the fence was placed there to keep Bigfoot from getting out. Regardless of which is true, we invite you to take a trip down Woodburn Road some dark night and see for yourself if you don't feel like something is standing on the other side of the fence, just beyond the reach of the car's headlights watching you.